What's up everyone? My last video I removed the alarm module from the scooter. Um, I don't really use it. Uh, I wanted to free up a little bit more room in the scooter. Uh, I also use a disc lock that has an uh, audible alarm built in that works really good. So didn't really need this. Wanted to get out of the chassis make more room. So I removed it and bypassed it by making this little jumper plug here. Since doing that I fully gutted the chassis, completely disconnected both controllers. Um, cabling everything because um, I wanted to, to clean up a bunch of things make it more uh, roomy inside more organized with the wiring instead of just one big mess uh, so today I'm going to start the process of reconnecting up the controllers to the scooter this is going to be the first video in like a two-part video the part I'm going to go over in this video is hook up everything that's necessary to make both the motors run um, you know be able to turn on the display and make the motors run um, so that'll be part one. That'll be this video here. Uh, after that, I'll make another video on connecting up the uh, rest of the wires. So first of all, you're, you're going to want to, anytime you're doing anything with wiring in a scooter, it's best to disconnect your battery uh, from both connections. Obviously, I've removed mine from the chassis. You don't need to go that far, but you should disconnect the uh, battery from the controllers. There's two plugs from uh, the battery, one going each to each, uh, each of the controllers. Okay, these controllers are the stock JP controllers that came in the scooter that I bought. Uh, so this video is specific for these two controllers. Um, they're 45 amp, 60 volt. They have the JP logo there on both of them. Um, another thing, there's an A, if you see an A on this one, and a B down here. The A controller is for the front motor, and the B controller is for the rear motor. So the first thing I'm going to do is hook up my motor phase wires. Uh, if I grab my cable from the front here, it's a real thick one. This is my motor cable. It has three thicker wires, a blue, a green, and a yellow. Um, those are the three motor phase wires. These other smaller wires, there's five of them. A red, black, a blue, yellow, green. Those are the Hall effect connections. We'll get to that in a little bit. Right now, I'm going to first connect up my phase wires here. So originally these were connected through this yellow box here, um, the connections from the motor and then also the connections from the controller were all connected together inside this yellow box. Now they do that um, to basically make it easier if you should ever need to replace controllers, it's easier to take it apart and such. I don't like using that. Um, there's just nuts holding these together. So like the two yellow wires are going together in there and there's a nut that's holding them together. Um, I've heard of those backing off, those nuts, and then you've got a loose connection between phase wires. These, these wires carry a lot of current, so you get some arcing, bad connection, poor performance, maybe cutting out of the motors. Uh, so that's a possibility with that. Also, they're just bulky. They take up a lot of room in the chassis, so I, I don't like those. I'm getting rid of them. Uh, and then just between those two and the alarm module I removed, um, that's a good amount of space that I'm uh, now regaining back in the chassis by removing these. So what I need to do is take my front controller, the A controller, find my three phase wires right here, the thicker blue, green, and yellow, and then my front motor wire and connect those wires together. For these specific controllers, I want to connect the yellow from the motor to the yellow of the controller, but then I want to connect the green from the motor to the blue of the controller, and I want to connect the blue from the motor to the green of controller. So yellow goes to yellow, but then blue goes to green and green goes, goes to blue. In the end, I'll end up soldering them. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to cut these lugs off of them and I'm going to use wire nuts uh, to secure the wires. And the reason why I'm doing that is after I test out these controllers, the stock ones for a while, I'm then going to swap them out with a, a new set of controllers I already have that's a sine wave set that this is supposed to be better than these, more smoother, maybe maybe better performance. But I, I have, haven't really ridden much on scooters, so I want to put these stock ones in and do some riding with that, get a feel for it, see how it is before I swap them out. Uh, but anyway, since I'm going to be swapping them out, rather than going through the process of soldering these nice right now, uh, so I'm just going to cut these off and use wire nuts temporarily to, for these connections. Later on, once I decide what, what controllers I'm leaving in the scooter, then I'll uh, hard solder the wires together. Okay, so I have my front motor phase wires connected up to the front A controller. Um, so again, I have yellow coming out of the controller, 
going to yellow of the motor cable. I have green coming out of the controller going to blue of the motor cable and blue coming out of the controller going to green of the motor cable. So the blue and green are swapped. Again, I use these wire nuts. Uh, if you do this, you want to use the right size. The ones I'm using are right there, 22 to 10 AWG. Secure them on there nice and tight. And then you want to hold the wire nut and then with your other hand, pull on each wire to make sure it's in there securely and doesn't come out of there. Um, so I've done that on the front. I'm going to do the same thing on the rear. It's exactly the same. The wiring is exactly the same for the front and the back. So I'm going to go yellow to yellow, green to blue, and blue to green. I have the B controller, which is the rear motor controller. His phase wire is going to the rear motor cable. And again, yellow to yellow, blue from the controller to green of the motor cable, and green of the controller to blue of the motor cable. Same thing on the front. The A controller going to the front motor cable, yellow to yellow, green to blue, blue to green. So the wiring is identical for the front and rear controller. Next, I'm going to connect up the hall connector uh, from the motor cable to the hall connector from the controllers. So I plugged my hall connector back together, the connector from the controller onto the connector that goes to the motor. Uh, same on the front motor. These again are wired identically. Let's take a close look at the wiring. I have the top of the con uh, connectors here, this side going to the controller, this side going to the motor. On the top they're red on the bottom. And if I follow through to the other side, red comes out the bottom. I have black on the opposite end on top comes out to black on the opposite end on top. So it goes red to red, black to black. Now if we flip this over, I see the yellow on the uh, controller side there, which is the far left, crosses connector and goes to blue. And then the green from the controller side in the middle there crosses over and goes to yellow on the motor side. And then lastly, the blue from the controller side crosses over and goes to green on the motor side. So those have to all be exactly like that for these controllers. To make it a little bit clearer, I wrote it down here. Motor, controller, red from the controller, red to the motor, black from the controller goes to black of the motor, yellow from the controller goes to blue of the motor, green from the controller goes to yellow of the motor and blue from the controller goes to green of the motor. And again, this is for the hall connections on these white connectors here. So as long as you didn't uh, change anything on your connectors, uh, they should match up that way. So now I have both motors connected, motor cables, the three phase wires and the hall wires coming out of each motor cable, the A controller for the front and the B controller for the rear. Next thing I'm going to hook up is my display slash throttle. The cable coming down from the handlebars has two three pin male connectors on it. One with yellow, blue, green wires. The other with red, orange, and black wires. So if we look on the rear controller, the B controller, we have a three pin female with yellow, blue, green coming directly out of the controller going just to that three pin female connector. And that's going to connect up to our male yellow, blue, green from our display cable. So I have that connected now. Uh, again, the yellow, blue, green three pin male from the display cable connected to the three pin female yellow, blue, green that goes directly into the B controller. Now this other three pin male coming out of the display cable, red, orange, black three pin male is going to connect up to a three pin female again from the B rear controller and three pin female has one black wire and two orange wires going to it. Okay next after hooking up display I need to make a couple of connections that just go between controller A and controller B. So on controller A I'm looking for a cable that comes out with gray and black wires, two wires, that goes to a two-pin female connector. 
And then there's also a small pigtail off it, also with gray and black wires. It goes to another two pin female connector. I'm now going to look on the rear controller, the B controller. Two wires coming out again, gray and black wires, coming straight out of the controller to a two pin male connector. So I need to connect this two pin male connector, gray and black wires, from the B controller. Not to the pigtail part, but to this connector that comes directly out of the A controller, which is a female gray and black wires. Okay, so I have that connected up. Again, gray and black wires going to a two-pin female from controller A. It then has a pigtail that goes off two-pin female again with gray and black. Connected to the two-pin male with gray and black that goes directly into the B controller. So the controllers are connected together to the gray and black wires. This line here with the gray and black wires is the eco slash turbo mode line. Okay, so now we've got this little pigtail coming off of there with gray and black wires, two pin female. And we're gonna connect that to our eco turbo switch, which comes down a cable and is a two pin male with red and yellow wires. So this two pin male with red and yellow wires is your eco turbo switch and you want to connect it to this little pigtail coming off the gray and black wires we just connected. So now I have my red and yellow plug, the eco turbo switch connected to that gray and black wire, which is the pigtail off the gray and black wires that connect the two controllers together. Again, this is your eco turbo mode line. So that's where you would connect the red and yellow. Now for me, I'm going to disconnect this because I converted my Eco Turbo switch to be my accessory light switch. I no longer have uh, Eco mode, it's just always in Turbo mode. So basically how that works is when you uh, push the push button in, the yellow push button, you're in Eco mode. And that comes down this wire and goes to both controllers, both the front and back motor, that's why it's connected to both, to tell the controllers you want eco mode. So both controllers then go into eco mode. So again, I've disconnected it because I'm using that switch for accessory lights now. So I'm not using this connection. I have nothing connected to it. By having nothing connected to this pigtail, I have basically disabled eco mode. So it's always in turbo mode. Okay, next I have a three pin female connector coming from the A controller with orange, green, and blue wires. So three pin female with orange, green, blue from the A controller. It also goes to a pigtail that has two green wires and it's a two pin female. So we're gonna take that three pin with the orange, green, blue and plug it onto a three pin male from the rear controller, the B controller, that also has orange, green, blue. Okay, so I've done that, have those two connected. Still have my pigtail here, the two pin female with green wires. Um, this line here, the orange, green, blue line connecting between the two controllers is your single dual motor mode line. Um, so the pigtail with the two green wires, two pin female, we're now going to connect up to the dual single motor mode switch, which comes down the switch cable along with the red and yellow wire to a two pin male with blue and green wires. That goes to your single dual motor mode switch and we're going to connect that up to the pigtail with the two green wires. Okay, so I have those both connected now. Next you need to connect up your alarm module or you will not get power to your display. So we're looking at the rear controller. Controller B has a three pin female coming out of it with red, orange, and black wires. This is where you plug your alarm module onto or in my case I remove my alarm module and made this little jumper plug to bypass the alarm module. Okay, so I have that plugged on there. And again, for me, I am bypassing the alarm module by using this little uh, plug here. Um, for anybody else who hasn't done that modification, which I did on a different video, this is where you'd be plugging your alarm module onto, coming out of the B controller. All right, so at this point, both motors should be able to operate. You should be able to do eco turbo mode and you should be able to do single dual motor mode. Um, so I got my battery connected and just a note, when you connect your battery to controller B, the rear controller, you generally will get a, a spark, an arc across it as you plug it on. It's normal, don't worry about it. There's a big capacitor in the controller that charges up 
or may have a charge left on it. When you plug this on, it, it creates a spark. The front one doesn't seem to do that. It only seems to be the rear one, the B one. Okay, so I've got my battery connected now. Uh, I'm going to go up here and hopefully turn on my display. Okay, that comes on. That's good. Uh, again, I don't have my eco mode connected, so I'm not going to worry about testing that. But my single dual motor button, uh, I have it in the out position for single motor mode. I'm going to leave it in gear one to start with because I'm only interested in seeing my rear motor spin right now. So we hit the throttle. <coughs> Okay, my rear motor is working. I'm going to push my dual motor mode button in. I want to see both motors running. There's the rear. And there's the front. If you have trouble getting one or both of your motors to run, you should be able to follow that wiring that I just did. Again, I'm going to do the next video. We'll be on hooking up the lights, the brake sense line, turn signals, all that other stuff, the remaining wiring. Um, on these controllers. One more thing, if you're going to be doing any messing with wires like this, um, or you're looking, you're, you have wires that are disconnected, you don't know where they go, get yourself a decent DC voltmeter. You can get one for like 20, 25 bucks, maybe 30 bucks most on Amazon. Just get a digital multimeter, self-ranging. You will need that coming up in the second video about hooking up the rest of the wires because there are some wires on the controller uh, one of the controllers and also on the light lighting cable some connectors on both of those that are identical So without a meter, you're not gonna be able to tell which one's which. All right guys till then take care. Peace